Um, oh, I want to, okay, let's cue in the background in the arms of the angels. I want to say RIP to Snaily, the snail, uh, discovered mm. uh, deceased just this afternoon. Uh -oh. um, mourn you till I join you. Mm -hmm. I don't know how old you were or if this is my fault, Snaily. But um, I hope. I will remember <laughs> you. I hope they're looking down at me from snail heaven, where they're munching on a cucumber. God bless. Thank you. They're with George Michael now. So. Um, <laughs> they're they're leaving snail juice for the angels now. Yeah, that's fucking right. That's right. I hope that um, in snail heaven they drink beer because snails like to drink beer. But I was like, never gonna give the snail beer, you know. You see. How long did you know this snail? We had the snail, I want to say, since September. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, um, the snail, yeah, the snail was found in September, I do believe. Possibly August. Um, and yep. since they were supposed to be food, A, they lived longer than that. So, we've got that going for us. And B, since we, they were found on Rye Lane. Uh, you know, they live longer than if they'd just been left on Rye Lane. So that's basically mm. all I can really say. Whether or not I was a good snail protector, I don't know because they're so different to us. And I was like mm. reading all these snail facts and like what you're supposed to do with giant African land snails and how you're supposed to eat them. And uh, they just flat out refused to do that. Where I'd be like, it says here you're supposed to be eating a balanced diet of like, you should eat these dried up mealworms and also some oats and then this, that, and the other. And the snail was like, I will only eat cucumbers and tomatoes. Thank you. And I was like, snaily, eat your lettuce. And they're like, no, fuck you. <laughs> and I was like, mm. they're like, eat your other stuff. Like no vegetable, vegetable. Fruit vegetables only. Yeah, basically, basically. So I don't vegetables. know. And I'd like, of course, just bought a bunch of new plants for their tank. And I was like, oh, when they wake up, they'll be delighted. But they never woke up. Mm. Yeah, so. I'd say that, that is a shame. Sad. Yeah. Sad to hear about um, about that. Mm -hmm. uh, rip. Rip Snaily. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Forever in our hearts. We'll just say that. We can say that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You died. You died as you lived, not being food. Yeah, that's right. Being kind of vaguely confusing. Um, so hey, you died as you lived, eating a caprese salad. <laughs> Basically, the snail. The snail's like putting a little, uh, you know, tying a napkin around its neck. Got the, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, the knife and fork. Like you know. Like a you know, like an old Looney Tunes cartoon or whatever. Yep, yep. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, completely. Good times. All right, uh, let's do this one for Snaily. That's for Snaily. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, three, two, one. Hello, and welcome back to We're Not So Different, a podcast how, about how we really are quite different from snails. That's My true. name is Luke Waters, and I've never kept a snail as a pet, because uh, I'm not going <laughs> to lie, they kind of gross me out. Not that I don't like them, they just kind of gross me out. I don't, you know. They're weird, okay. Uh, they, they uh, the, the juice that they have... Um, mm. Not mm -hmm. cool, but hey, mm -hmm. um, I also don't eat them. So yeah, there you go. Word. I am I am neutral on the snail, but happy for you. And as always, I'm joined by Doctor Eleanor Yaniga, who uh, recently had a snail pass. Uh, Rip, Rip Snaily. Um, uh, you know, they're where they're jousting knights. Heaven. They're jousting yep. knights up in heaven now. Yeah, with a yep. with a rabbit for some reason. You yeah, know, um, yeah. <laughs> Heaven is like rabbits and snails, and they're just jousting forever. 
They're like, no, this actually, we, we always just thought it was, you know, medieval people, you know, doing something like, oh, wouldn't this be cool? But no, they actually did ride snails back then. They just, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we just don't see it anymore. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah. Uh, hey, everyone. Welcome uh, to another episode. Uh, this time we are talking about uh, some failures, failures in life. Um, but before we get there, we are uh, going to answer a couple questions. First, we have one from Estrogenic Memory. My Belarusian friend has been really down lately. She's also very superstitious in a Slavic way. No disrespect as a superstitious woman in a Mediterranean way. We agree we would perform some pre-Christian Slavic religious rituals around the clinical area to enhance the vibe. We both realize we don't know anything about it, lol. Wondering if Eleanor has suggestions off the top of her head or maybe uh, the community has any resources for Slavic pagan rituals or witchcraft. Um, I mean, first of all, shout out to uh, my fellow Slavs uh, Mm -hmm. and, and superstition. Um, I mean, what I tend to know about Slavic paganism is more like deities and like days of celebration. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know that much about ritual and would definitely be interested in learning more. But it's like, you know, um, we all know Baba Yaga, our good friend. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, But what about uh, Polutnotsia, who's Lady Midnight? Which, you know, she makes sure that you're not like fucking around at night and out of bed kids uh get your ass back in bed uh yeah exactly so there there are good things like that um there's of course the vila um who are kind of like fairies right um and the so that's kind of like an uh, an overlap with what we were talking about about fairies the other day Mm -hmm. um you know like it's a lot there's like a lot more demons going around I will say. And one Mm -hmm. thing about like the demons and like these demon ideas is that they cohabitate alongside Christianity for a really long time. Mm -hmm. Uh, So for example, you will have like a lot of concern about particular demons uh, that very specifically um, are trying to take the souls of unbaptized children. Like at Drekovac, that's like a a Polish one, I think more specifically where that's um, a, considered right um there are also people like uh, the rusalka who are like malevolent female ghosts uh or like maybe kind of mermaids who hang out at uh in rivers and will come get your ass so like basically my point being that like your friend being like a superstitious uh belarusian like bang on because like a lot of the stuff that i know is like about what can possibly come fuck with you mm-hmm uh, like the Stuhach that live up in like the mountains, which are like demons. And of course, you know, we've got just like vampires, mm. yeah, vampiri, you know. Um, I also know that like as, as I know some of the big holidays. So it's like the spring equinox. That's a big one. Um, you got the summer solstice again. Uh, but there are also things like, you know, the celebration of the ancestors. Uh, so that's like uh, Krasnaya Gorka. I like, uh, you know, various things like that. Of course, what I'm saying is kind of like Central European mm-hmm. Slavic stuff, which I know a little bit more about. Uh, but, you know, of course, we know more about like a, some Russian things like like the Baba Yaga and things. Mm-hmm. Right. So um, I think it's cool and neat. But in terms of ritual, I don't know um, all that much if I'm being honest, you know, mm. but um, I think it whips. So, yeah, like, let's do more of this. I think this is a great idea. Um, yeah. Oh, I, I guess one more thing I do know is I know about the Slavic New Year, uh, which uh, happens in March. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, it's called mm-hmm. Um And that's kind of like, uh, so, you know, the idea here is that, um, you know, the year begins with spring. Right. So, mm-hmm. yay. <laughs> hey, Slavic stuff. It's cool. We should all learn more about it. And this has kind of like inspired me to look into it a bit more, but I need like a proper library in order Mm -hmm. to get more ritual stuff going. Mm -hmm. Slops, 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 slops. 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 That's right. That's right. Yep. Uh, Next up, uh, estrogenic memory. Thank you so much for the question. Next up, we have a question from Rita Patina. 
who uh, says, did you already talk about the Slavic uprising of 983? And um, I don't think so. No. Uh, Um, (laughs) So, like, I mean, we might have to do, like, a whole motherfucker on this. But um, what we are referring to here uh, is in 983, there was um, a rebellion against Autonian rule. Of Mm. kind of like basically the Slavic stuff, which is east of the Elba. Um, Mm -hmm. So basically kind of like trying to figure out who gets to control things. Like, you know, the Germans are, of course, like very interested in, you know, consuming Slavic land. You know, this Mm -hmm. is how Bohemia gets wrapped into things. Uh, But we don't... the, The problem about this kind of thing is that we don't actually know about like what is going on with the evidence. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because like a bunch of it is like, uh, well, this happened way, way after the event. So is this just kind of like wishful thinking Mm -hmm. on the part of people or did this actually happen? So, for example, like um, we have um, in the annals of Hildesheim a reference to it, uh, which says that um, the emperor holds an assembly at Verona where Henry the Younger was recalled from exile and made the Duke of the Bavarians. In the same year, the Slavs were made rebels against the Saxons. Mm-hmm. And you're like, well, can we know a bit more? And it's like, no. No. No, you may not. Um, and then, like, you know, um, in the uh, life of St. Adalbert um, by Bruno of Querfort, we also have um, a reference to it. Um, and so, like, uh, the th- this is, like, one of these little uh, references where it says, um, at that time, the haughty gens of the pagan Lutitsi threw off the yoke of Christianity and who, moreover, labored in error with their servitude had been established, hastened after foreign gods and made Christians who were unable to flee those pursuing them died by the sword. Um, okay, so what this is referring to uh, is uh, our good friend, uh, St. Adalbert, uh, one of the uh, very important Czech saints. So shout out. Um, part of his martyrdom, like he's the Bishop of Prague. Uh, and he he leaves Prague for numerous reasons in the first place. So like basically the noble family that he belongs to gets on the wrong side of the Pshemi Slids and he's a little bit scared for his life. But uh, he also decides that he wants to convert uh, the pagans in Pomerania. Mm -hmm. Um, And so he goes up there and gets his ass killed and martyred. Um, So, like, basically, in this case, the way that they're talking about it is, like, it's not about a German rebellion. It's about, like, an anti-Christian thing. But that Mm -hmm. serves very well in terms of, like, talking about, like, more specifically what St. Adalbert is doing so anyway like it goes on like this so we're just we're not exactly sure there's a lot to get into about it and like quite a few sources but like let's just put it this way um the longer we get like the further we get from uh the events itself the longer the descriptions get right (laughs) so it's like by the time you are hanging out uh like uh so uh, the chronica slavorum which was written by Helmut of Basso, uh, like kind of in the 12th century, is like, oh, I got a lot to say about this shit, right? Yeah. And so like that's going on and on and on. But by then we've got kind of like a Slavic people who are more particularly amalgamated into mm-hmm. the church and things like that other than just uh, the um, uh, the Czechs, right, who, who mm-hmm. do it first. Uh, best to ever do it. Bam, bam. Uh, but yeah, I, so like the, it kind of keeps happening up until about the 13th century or so. So it's an interesting one because we're not sure exactly what the fuck is going on there. Like, mm-hmm. is this like a cool way of saying fuck you Germans? Is this like pagans fucking about? Is this kind of like much of nothing? Mm-hmm. It, it, it's unclear. And that's fun, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, they didn't uh, resume, fully resume being vassals. Um of the whole of you know part of the holy roman empire until uh like until like 1160s so yeah yeah, yeah they, so um, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's like a long ass time for them to just be like no thanks mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. yeah yep. yeah yeah poor and then you know they had to suffer a crusade and everybody was really mean to them yeah know, that's true you know. yeah 
Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, Rita Patina, thank you uh, so much for the question. Uh, we may come back to it uh, later, uh, more in a different episode. But, uh, but yeah, um, if you would like to ask questions like uh, Rita and Estrogenic Memory, then please uh, do subscribe to the Patreon, patreon.com slash WNSDpod. Just $5 a month, and uh, you get all of these episodes ad-free. You get two bonus episodes a month, and uh, access to our Discord, and, you know, the ability to ask us questions, as we said. So, yeah, check it Mm -hmm. out, $5 a month, patreon.com slash WNSDpod. Excuse me. All right, so last week we talked about Charlemagne. Good old Carl the Great himself and his glorious rule as head of the Carolingian Empire, he created through military conquest and shrewd diplomatic measures. Even after his death, Charlemagne's political, social, and cultural legacy is almost unrivaled in the Middle Ages. He became the template for medieval European rulers. He formalized the medieval land tenure and social systems that would spread widely during the era, was the forerunner of the Holy Roman Empire, which would exist until nearly a thousand years after his death, and was a patron of cultural pursuits. Because of this legacy, Charlemagne is rightly remembered as one of the most important leaders in world history. Yet it is strange that we're just talking about the personal legacy of Charlemagne and not the long legacy of his Carolingian Empire. After all, his empire was the largest one in Western and Central Europe since the fall of Western Rome, stretching from the Mediterranean to the Baltic. Surely it survived for centuries after Carl's death, right? Well, not so much. You see, Charlemagne ran into the classic trap that has plagued rulers throughout human history. His four sons, who were destined to succeed him, were big, dumb idiots who collectively squandered his legacy less than 40 years after his death. Charlemagne had four sons who vied for the crown. Uh, Charlemagne had four sons who vied for the crown. They were uh, Pepin, sometimes called Pepin the Hunchback, and whose Mm -hmm. legitimacy was questioned after Charlemagne divorced his mom. Pepin of Italy, formerly known as Carloman, Louis the Pious, and Charles the Younger. Of these four, three predeceased their father, which is a form of failure in dynastic rulerships when you were in line for the throne. Sorry, that's just how the game is played. Uh, within months of one another due to an epidemic, leaving Louis the Pious as the only choice to rule no matter how bad he was at it. This is especially problematic because... Charles the Younger uh, might have been competent enough to keep the empire intact as a real as a real state structure grew in its place, but as I said, he died. Instead, Charlemagne's territorial and imperial legacy was dashed as it was partitioned for the first, but not the final time, at the Treaty of Verdun in four or I'm sorry, in eight forty three. Due to a series of untimely deaths in the line of his succession, the empire was briefly and tenuously reunited under Charlemagne's great grandson Charles the Fat. In 881, but he couldn't hold it together. Charles the Fat died without a legitimate heir in 888, and the Carolingian Empire finally broke apart permanently, swept into the dustbin of history barely 70 years after its founder's death. But it wasn't all bad. At least we got the Holy Roman Empire out of the eastern half of the Carolingian Empire, right? See? Every, you know, every cloud, silver lining. That's what we got here, folks. Um... Yeah, so it's another entry in our occasional Medieval Fail Sons series, and this time we're talking about Charlemagne's four bumbling boys. We'll talk about the kids themselves, uh, Pepin's abortive coup attempt, Charlemagne's repeated attempts to have a peaceful succession prior to his death, and the squandering of dear old dad's empire through myriad fuck-ups. So... All right, let's, uh, Eleanor, let's let's dive in. So let's start with Pepin, the the OG, the original re- recipe Pepin here. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. oldest of Charlemagne's sons. And yeah, let's get his failure out of the way first since he's out of the picture before the rest of them. So yeah, what what do we got here with, with Pepin? First failure really is um, that he daddy don't love he mommy no more. <laughs> right so like he is if what we're doing here is we're doing like a um, succession you know he is he's the connor right mm-hmm. like so he's like the the original like the reason why you're such a loser is that like that it don't work like that right mm-hmm. um whether or not like and then there are kind of conflicting stories about whether pepin's mother had ever married charlemagne 
Oh. Um, but like, you, we we have to understand that this is kind of like. Uh, of course, like the the sources will say that she didn't because Charlemagne didn't feel like being married to her anymore. So yeah, like hey, right? So like, <laughs> the, the historian Einhard is like, oh well, she's a concubine. Like, not his real, real wife. And the thing <laughs> is, like, within Germanic culture at the time, it is kind of, like, fairly common to mm-hmm. have, like, a, women who are your wives. But, like, maybe you didn't have the full-on religious ceremony or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but basically, the the point is that this is kind of, like, uh, the, the wife in question is called Himmeltrude. Mm-hmm. Return with a V to that name. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Um, and like maybe, maybe like they they were never married, but it kind of seems more likely that Charlemagne just kind of put her aside because um, he wanted to get married to uh, the daughter of the Lombard king mm. because uh, you know mm, that's good uh, matrilineal, like you know that's that's matrimony to get down mm-hmm. on, right? Like you're definitely going to be making moves with that, whereas Himmeltrude was apparently not doing that anymore. So. Um, Basically, like, uh, we know that he has he has a hunchback. That is something, like, going on. You know, he's named Pepin because that's rather the thing. Uh, Charlemagne's dad is Pepin the Short, of course. <laughs> um, so, you know, like, it's kind of, like, a way to just make sure that everybody understands that we're we're keeping things in the line right yeah so like and there's so many peppins you know it's like this is just pep in the first right so anyway uh he was still brought up at court one way or another um but it's like it's not even like the uh the first marriage that kind of like gets him in trouble it's um charlemagne's marriage to hildegard mm-hmm. because hildegard like, third wifey gets a bunch of more male heirs going. So you've got Charles the Younger, you've got Carloman, like, da 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 And so mm. now it's like, ooh, you know, and she's not particularly happy with Pepin being around the court, right? Uh, mm. Super, super common. This happens all the time, right? So, um, like, as a result of this, like, he kind of probably gets disinherited, right? And mm. Pepin is kind of like, well, fuck that, right? Like, I, I'm not, like, I'm not going to sit here and deal with this, right? Um, and so he's like, well, I'm going to try to, like, rise up against him, right? Um, and, like, in particular, as a part of this, like, Charles the Younger got named, like, King of the Franks. And, like, everyone is like, hello? And Pepin is like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and they're like, no, dude, like, don't look over there, right? So, um, like, uh, basically, he gets kind of, like, set off, but he tries to foment a rebellion. He gets some of the Frankish nobles together and gets absolutely fucking got. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, yeah. uh, in 792, the, there's, like, an open rebellion, and, like, they get found out. Like, I don't know, I, like, possibly someone ratted on them. Uh, mm-hmm. And to be fair, like, there are a lot of revolts against Mm -hmm. Charlemagne like you know one dude controlling this much land is a bit weird so it's like you know you have like the Saxons revolting um the Duke of Benevento revolts at a point in time and you know Pepin is like why not Pepin right (laughs) like you know (laughs) that's absolutely fine uh but like it just does not go particularly well for him uh and so as a result Charlemagne is like, okay, well, all these people are fucking getting got, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, but because it's still his son, he doesn't get killed. Like, everybody else plotting gets killed. And he instead gets, like, sent off to a monastery. They tonsured his ass and yeah. threw him in the monastery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that basically um, Einhard in the the um, passage about this says, when his deceit was discovered and the conspirators were punished, his head was shaved and he was suffered in accordance with his wishes to devote himself to a religious life in the monastery of Prum, which is a pretty nice life, to yeah. be honest. Like, you know, living in a Carolingian monastery as things go, it's yeah. not so bad, right? Like... But you, you can understand why he had to, like, come down pretty hard. But And this is still, like, a pretty good get-out-of-jail-free card, yeah. to be fair, right? Like, yeah. So, you know, the cards are really stacked against him. You know, yeah. they're, they, he just has too many brothers. So I would say of them, like, he's the one that I'm kind of most sympathetic towards, you know? 
right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, he, yeah, I think he kind of, you know, had the, um, he, you know, he got the short end of the stick. A lot of it wasn't his fault. You know, mm-hmm. he was getting pushed out and everything, um, or it seemed like he was anyway. You know, and like he does the the failed coup and Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. i don't know it kind of seemed like they were like uh charlemagne was like away from the court and you know they were like uh just fomenting stuff and then they came back and it was just found out and it was like i mean man i guess if you're gonna do a coup you should probably uh you know you should probably Mm -hmm. plan it a little better (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Sorry. And I mean, I sorry, su- dude. I suppose part of what is going on here too, like other than like you know, we got new wifeys, we got new kids, et cetera, et cetera. Is there's like a little bit of a you know, all hunchbacks are bastards in their father's eyes. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. Because like we have to kind of like recognize that medieval people are absolute shit for this one Mm -hmm. uh which is that you know like there's this whole thing about like beautiful people or handsome people are the ones that god favors and they're Mm -hmm. virtuous so if you have um you know anything wrong with you quote unquote like if you have any you know thing that makes you deviate from normality then everyone goes oh well this is proof that like you you're shady right Because um, if you weren't shady, why would God do this to you? So it's kind of like, uh, so there, there's also like almost certainly some disability stigma thrown into this yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've tried to avoid calling him uh, Pepin the Hunchback because, I mean, I don't know. That one just like, there, there's some like names, you know, like uh, Charles the Fat, there's Charles the Bald, uh, Louis the Stutterer. I don't know. But like Pepin the Hunchback is just like, come on, we like. Just call him a Pepin, you know, yeah. a Pepin the Unfavored. Yeah. Pepin yeah. the Bastard Born. I don't, you know. I don't like, know. Oh, yeah. yeah like, and they're like, no, Pepin the guy with the awful, just horrific, demonic. Like, yeah, like Pepin the Ugly, right? Oh, like, like, come on. It's come like, on, it's guys. not. You, and you could have just gone with Pepin the Bastard. Yeah. Right? Like, I mean, but asking right the French not to be problematic, you know, it's never... Never gonna happen. <laughs> Never throughout history. Um, hey, that's a joke. Um, yeah, I know Americans are problematic too. I get it. Um, oh, sorry. I was just trying to drink water right there. Oh, that's too good. Oh, shit. <laughs> get their asses. Uh, uh, I didn't see what you were doing. I was like, I was like, what is she doing? I was like, is on she water. like. Oh, <laughs> just- I'm all like, they're all like, eh, l'ebizum. <laughs> Wookies, <laughs> you can't call it. You can't call him the Hunchback anymore because of Wookies. Wookies, Wookies, I, I don't know. Uh, these yeah. days, uh, you cannot even uh, insult Pepin the Hunchback. Oh, 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 oh. oh time, to, time to go see my mistress. She's 15. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm, sorry. I'm done. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We love that's you, the only, French. That's mostly French writers, not all of you. My bad. Look, um, look. hey, French people, thank you for Parmentier. Look, please don't be mad at me. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. That. Thank you. For the crescent, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Uh, Okay, so now uh, we'll introduce um, the three younger sons of Charlemagne and bring them all up to 806 when Charlemagne issues the Divisio Regnorum, officially dividing up his kingdom on his death. You know what they say about the best laid plans. Um, Yeah. Not great. First, we got Charles the Younger, who was born in 772. He's the second, Charlemagne's second son, the first son by Hildegard. Mm-hmm. And ye old golden boy. Yeah, so like in between, we have uh, Desiderata, who is the Lombard princess in question. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they just like annul that shit. It doesn't go well. So here we go. Here comes Hildegard. Uh, and Hildegard is like, um, she's like a noble woman, and she is like ready to birth the fuck down. Right. So, um, like, you know, basically calling him Charles the Younger is, you know, like Pepin would have seen the writing on the wall. Right. One dad is like, well, here's Charles the Younger. It's like, oh, (laughs) oh, 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 I I, I see how it is. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, like, I don't know. Charlemagne's off besieging Pavia or whatever. And like uh, Hildegard pops one out. uh, And, you know, here we go. It's it's the young Charles. Um. Basically, the understanding is now that we've got like a presumptive heir, but not it's 
we have to understand, as we will get to when we talk about the way that everything is uh, divided up, it's not like primogeniture. You know, it's mm-hmm. not like a, this kid is born, so everything is going to go to him. But it basically means that we definitely have someone who's inheriting at this point in time. Yeah. Right. So yeah. we don't know tons about his childhood in the way that like it's difficult to know anything from the ninth century. Like, let alone no one is like, he was a precocious boy given to playing <laughs> ball games. You know, like we don't really yeah. know. Uh, we do know that he's educated in the liberal arts because like that's um what charlie does with all of them he's got like normal martial training you know so like combat riding etc mm-hmm. um and so like we know here's a guy who is going to be hooking up with uh you know in, into the lineage um and he really kind of comes onto the scene in terms of what our records are at the same time as his brothers mm-hmm. right because they all get uh traipsed in front of pope adrian and they're like okay baptize these kids right uh, <laughs> yeah. so yeah and um which is quite funny um when it comes to uh his younger brother pepin of yeah. I- italy uh which is yeah. like a good time i guess to sort of like segue over to homeboy yeah. right because yeah. pepin pepin of italy born in 777 the third son of charlemagne second son by hildegard originally named carloman but rechristened as pepin in 780 you know charlemagne's like if he didn't get the hint with with charles the younger uh original recipe pepin yeah now you, now you you better get it fucking it's now. so bad That's like so it's fucking mean so i mean mean-y. i get it charlemagne's playing the game i understand i like it's it, it really is the Game of Thrones. That is how it works. A hundred percent. However, yeah. dog, yeah. that's fucked up. <laughs> like <laughs> I know, right? Because oh, yeah, it's like any, and so we're carting all of these kids down there, right? Because so mm. we've got like uh, the new Pepin, the old Carloman, um, and also Louis mm. gets carted down to Rome, and they're like, "Hey, first Pepin, you stay here." <laughs> Like, but first Pepin stays up, like, in Frankia, right? And they're like, okay. You stay keep watch. He's like, over what? They're like, I don't fucking know. I don't know. Bye. 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 Right? So, like, uh, Carloman becomes, like, Pepin. That's cool. You know? And, like, and and here we go, right? Like, then, you at the same time, as a part of this, Pepin and Louis who is the youngest and like Louis is like a child child. Yeah. At the time. Like this is like, you know, basically like a new Pepin is four. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, the Louis is like a toddler. Right. And they're mm-hmm. like, quick, quick, baptize these kids. We're changing his name to, to Pepin. And then also BT dubs. Uh, let's crown these kids really yeah. quickly. So like we're, we've got like a four year old, Pepin, yeah. new Pepin, who gets crowned, <laughs> yeah. which is weird, right? Yeah, they're like, here, uh, please, my my son, can you um, can you can you give him, can you make him king of Italy? It's like, mm. I mean, I guess, man, like. Is Italy a thing? Like, what are we talking about here? Yeah, exactly. And so, basically, um, New Pepin is made the king of the Lombards. And Louis, tiny little baby Louis, is made the king of Aquitaine. And they're like, bye, babies. <laughs> like, Yeah. Off you go to these other courts, right? Yeah, because like, he wanted them to be, like, raised as, like, he wanted them to be, like, true locals. He was mm-hmm, like, no, mm-hmm. you go and live there and learn the local customs. And, like, okay, cool. Yeah. And so then, like, uh, Charles the Younger, basically, the idea is that he is then going to kind of, like, have the core of like mm-hmm. Frank, yeah, M- maybe split with Pepin, the old one? Mm. Question mark. Doubtful, doubtful. <laughs> yeah. So right, like, uh, so the old Charles gets some command, uh, yeah. like around seven eighty four, and celebrates by going to war. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he like goes on a campaign against the Saxons, um, and he seems to have been like a kind of okay in terms of like uh, being a deputy to Charlemagne. Mm-hmm. Um, like, and as a result, by 789, Charlemagne is like, okay, so you're going to take um, everything in the kingdom west of the Sam. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of like uh, mine and Neustria. 
Um, and so basically, they're like, also, by the way, we're going to like maybe marry you off to the king of Amercia's daughter. Up and, and then, then we're just going to like, we're going to get a little thing going here. We're going to get like a, a kind of North Sea thing going. Yeah. Um, but basically that kind of like falls through because they're like, oh, and also uh, Charles's sister should marry like, you know, and, and Charles Mendes is like, dude, you are the kingdom of mercy. please calm down. Like you do not. <laughs> you're not, you're not li- marrying my daughter. No, you're not, like, you're not worth it. You don't have, you don't have the kingdom. You don't have anything, and like Sean was like, "Nope, daughters are staying home." Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which and is so odd, but yeah, yeah. Like so, Charles is kind of like the, the young Charles. He's kind of like doing his thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like you know, he's kind of like following his dad around. Like yeah. he's hanging out, like uh, you know, moving up and down the sand, trying to rule, right? Mm-hmm. Um. And he, like, begins to beef with the older Pepin Mm -hmm. more often, which also corresponds with the older Pepin beginning to be seen as more illegitimate. (laughs) Yeah. Funny that. Yeah, it's funny that. that Mm, Yeah, like, so basically. And we know that this is kind of happening, too, because, like, the older Pepin is kind of, like, no longer being taken on campaigns, Mm -hmm. whereas the young Charles is. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of like, and then suddenly, like, he starts showing up in documents, the young Charles, as the primogenitus, Mm. of which, you know, the firstborn. And everyone is like, wait, what? And Pepin is like, excuse me. Right. (laughs) So, like, you know, then Pepin, like, gets together with the Bavarians and blah, 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 blah. Right. So. Yeah. Anyway, uh, by 800, Charles is, like, helping out, uh, like, in Neustria. um, And, like, Danish pirates have been, like, Mm -hmm. going up and down. And then it's like. Charlemagne is like, okay, well, peace. Um, I'm about to go off and get crowned emperor. Mm-hmm. So, like, you stay here, right? And, like, and this kind of indicates that Charlemagne's pretty happy with him. Yeah. Right? Pretty good military mm-hmm. commander. You can leave him in charge of a pretty rich area of land. Mm-hmm. And he can he can take care of it while you go get crowned by the Pope or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, he, like, fights the Bohemians, He's like fighting the sorbs. He's like doing like some light Slav genocide things, things of this nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but like basically, th- this all kind of comes a cropper, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. we, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the by eight oh six, like all the uh, by eight oh six, Louis the Pious, who's the youngest, he's like, um, you know, he's. Uh, um, fuck my ability to do math like just blinked out anyway like yeah he's he's old enough to be there he's like 28 so mm-hmm. like you know uh, Charlemagne's ready to settle this in 806 he issues the Divisio Regnorum mm-hmm. uh, which divided up the land between his sons Charles got the most he got Francia, Saxony, mm-hmm. Nordgau and parts of Alemania yep. Pepin of Italy would retain italy as well Mm -hmm. as getting most of bavaria and alemania and louis would get aquitaine as well as provence septimania and parts of burgundy however um you know there uh is a problem with lines of succession in that uh you know they are uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. based on the fragility of human life. And, uh, yeah, between 810 and 811, an epidemic struck the uh, lands that killed <laughs> Charles the Younger, Pepin of Italy, and even OG Pepin. OG, I, I'm like, OG Pepin, why? Rip, he, yeah, like, he's like he, he was in monastery. He didn't do anything. Leaving only Louis the Pious to inherit the r- entirety of Charlemagne's kingdom outside of Italy. Which was given to Pepin of Italy's son, Bernard. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. Louis is the biggest fail son here. Oh, my God. He is fucking awful at this. Yes. He's so bad, right? So it's like, basically, Charlemagne cocks it, you know. And uh, here is Louis. He's over in Anjou. Um, and everyone's like, yo, uh, like a, a second plane has hit the tower or whatever. And he's like, fuck. And so he runs <laughs> off to Aachen um, and, he, and he's like, OK, everybody like I'm crowning myself emperor. Right. Mm. Uh, and cool. All right. That's good. But everyone is stressed the fuck out. 
it off mm-hmm. him, right? Like, basically, like, the first thing that he does is he does, like, a big palace purge. Yeah. Right? He doesn't like, um, like, the old Germanic pagan stuff that Charlemagne had, like, been keeping around. Because, mm-hmm. you know, Charlemagne's a history buff, right? And uh, and Louis like, we got to get this out of here. And so he then is like, who is allowing my dad to, like, do these terrible things and everyone is like i don't know dude like have you tried telling your dad what to do and he's like get the fuck out of here right and like he does like this big morality (laughs) cleanse essentially Mm -hmm. right um he any of his um like uh female relatives who were not already married he's like guess what bitch you're a nun now Because, like basically he doesn't want like any brothers-in-law who are going to like question him Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's got like half brothers who mm-hmm. are like uh, all bastards um, yeah. and like that's you know not brilliant for him but he's kind of like alright so you're going to go off and be like monks like and mm-hmm. this is like including like also Charlemagne's cousins he's like get the fuck out of here get thee to a monastery this is what's happening right mm-hmm. Um, like and then he brings in his new his own advisors right so like one of these is like bernard who's the margrave of septimania great the other is ebo who's the archbishop of rome rom mm-hmm. i fucking hate it rhymes 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 yeah anyway fuck fuck french fuck a language the season hey 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 if i can make this language make sense bro you can't <laughs> I, like you know, okay. So in in one way, we like Ebo because he was born a serf, and like, let's fucking go, mm-hmm. serf time. Um, but then like, uh, and like Louis kind of like put him up into that office, but then like he's like, oh, actually, fuck this, right? So he's got like a real problem with flightiness, mm-hmm. and he relies very heavily on bishops because he's like his whole deal is that he's pious, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so. Like, that would kind of be cool if you also could just, like, trust your guys enough to keep them around you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, like, that's the background, right? (laughs) That's the background of what's going on. Like, it's pretty chaotic at court. I think uh, this is fair to say. And, like, as a result of, like, everything that's going on, there are rather a lot of uh, civil wars, Mm-hmm. Mm. Because so he uh, he makes this uh, big uh, announcement, the Ordinatio Imperii. Okay, um, and basically, like a, the thing that happened is Louis and the court are there, like um, they're walking across a wooden gallery um, in the palace in Aachen, like they're visiting the you know, and uh, the gallery collapses and a bunch of people die. Mm. Louis survives, like by the skin of his teeth. Uh, but he's suddenly like, oh, shit, I've got to, like, plan for my succession, right? Because, mm-hmm. like, I could die at any moment. And it's like, yeah, no, fuck, I thought you were a medieval Christian. Like, I would have <laughs> been on top of that ages ago. But, okay. So, basically, he, like, very, very quickly is like, we need to get, like, the Ordinatio Imperio in line. We're going to say who is inheriting, right? Um, mm-hmm. it, it wasn't called that at the time. We call it that now. Um, so, basically, <laughs> he has got... Two sons already who have a share in government, right? So there's Lothar and there's Pepin. But unlike his father, you know, his father was like, okay, well, you go over here and you rule this. You go over here. Uh, They were both governing both Bavaria and Aquitaine, like Mm -hmm. kind of, right? Um, And so he's like, okay, well, we're going to have to divide the empire. Okay, so Lothar is going to uh, get what we begin to call Lotharingia, my favorite name. (laughs) Of any area. Lotharingia. Lotharingia. Like, so fucking good. Like, let's fucking go. Um, so he's, like, he is um, named the co-emperor. And uh, he basically gets, like, the middle mm-hmm. of, like, Francia. So he gets, like, most of Franconia. Um, right. Pepin gets Aquitaine. Um, mm-hmm. And also, which this is, like, Gascony, you know, like, Toulouse, Carcassonne, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And then the youngest son, Louis, is very specifically the king of Bavaria and the neighboring marches. So Lothar gets, like, a really good deal out of this, right? Mm -hmm. And then the idea here is that if one of those subordinate kings died, then his sons are going to take over it. Mm 
Mm-hmm. But if uh, those kings die without kids, Lothar gets the kingdom. Because mm-hmm. this is like a pro-Lothar. <laughs> Louis just really like Lothar. What can I say, right? And then in the event that Lothar dies without issue, then one of Louis the Pious's like younger sons could like be chosen to replace him. But you know, basically the nobility would have to vote on that. Mm-hmm. So like, basically, you're still going to have a supreme empire, like emperor, right? And what mm-hmm. we're kind of saying here is that like. Lothar is the guy, but there are these two kind of subordinate kingdoms within it that are run by his brothers. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it uh, it makes sense in that uh, it's a fucked up, overlapping mess. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And yeah, Louis's gonna keep. <laughs> One of the fun things about Louis is uh, he begins to just start fucking changing his succession like every like week and a half, two weeks. He's like, uh, yeah. all of it to you. No, all of it to my new son by my new wife. And he's yeah. like, yeah, what? Yeah. Wait, huh? Basically. And so it's like because people get left out, they immediately mm. are like, "Who, whom's the fuck want to conspire? <laughs> yeah. Right. And yeah. he's got this new son, like, ju- he's got this new wife, Judith, um, mm-hmm. uh, the son of whom is Charles the Bald. Um, and, and he's like, oh, well, we got to, well, let's find some room for Charles the Bald. And Lothar, Pepin, and Louis are like, who? Yeah. Like, I don't recall. I don't, I don't have a brother named uh, Charles the Bald. Do yeah, you? <laughs> right. Exactly. And so this does not go down well at all because they're like i thought that we had actually like you know like remember how i said louis flighty Mm -hmm. yeah right like uh that's an issue that's a real issue and like what is also happening too is that like uh you know bernard uh who was um pepin's son uh got left out of all of this Mm -hmm. right um, and he was like, where the fuck, like, granddad said, I was supposed to be involved in this because Charlemagne was like, and don't forget Barnard. And like, Louis is like, hey, hey, I will forget about this immediately. Right. So like, you know, Pepin of Italy, like, had the son the entire time and like, mm. uh, and Louis is like refusing to admit this. And so he's like, well, I'm fucking like, this is ridiculous because I've been ruling Italy like the whole time. And granddad said I could. So like, what the fuck? So yeah. uh, basically he's like, okay, that's it. I'm like slams down on the rebellion button. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, this does not go well. Uh, Bernard dies. Um, at, at, like, and it's a very long drawn out death. Yeah. Um, a, yeah. A bad blinding. He mm-hmm. got like infection or, you know, internal trauma or whatever and just died a few days like, ah, gross. yeah and like this is not people are like i'm sorry louis the pious yeah like what are you so louis is like oh and he like has to perform penance essentially yeah. because it's like you can't just go around like killing your nephew and like blinding yeah. him like this is not this is not good at all right mm-hmm. so like in that everyone is like what is going on here like we do not like this guy at all but like he does like this big public penance and what, yeah. whatever meanwhile there's also a bunch of frontier wars yeah he so loses, yeah, yeah loses yeah. a bunch of land to the slavs uh that's right <laughs> the slavs Woo! they lost it they the bulgarians took their land back uh you know they um uh, he just starts losing land because he's not the realm is like fucking on stilts now and he's yeah. the ground is shaking and he's you know he's not doing it quite as much yet but soon he's about to start changing like line of succession like every, as i said like every few hours or whatever yep and then they start losing land in, in like uh in spain and yeah because well. the basques are like i'm yeah. not into this right mm-hmm. meanwhile he's like remarrying some yeah. more He's like, yeah, I'm really hoping we get some more fucking sons in here. This will be like fucking great. That's what right. We more sons, yeah. Yeah, this will be good. And then like, so this just calls everything into question, right? Mm. 
Like, and, and, and he's, again, he's a flighty motherfucker. So he's like, I've changed my mind. Now this guy's involved. Now this guy's involved. And what this does is it's incredibly destabilizing because everyone is kind of like when they should be worrying about the Slavs or the Basques, they're mm. looking at each other. Yeah. You know, like there, there, there isn't, there is less time spent like worrying about the realm as a whole and how this is going to be a contiguous and well thought out thing. And a lot more time being like, which one of my new, like three quarter brothers or whatever the fuck <laughs> is like going to succeed. Right. Mm-hmm. So like there are multiple fucking civil wars mm-hmm. in this type. Like, so basically he, there are like three civil wars in quick succession, basically. Yeah. The first like, one by his oldest son. No, Lothar. No, no, no. Lothar. Why? No, I mean, Lutheringia is gone, gone too soon. Mm hmm. Basically, Lothar says that the new wife, Judith, um, had been shagging Bernard, mm. which is quite funny. Um, and he's like, oh, so Bernard is like the baby daddy. Mm. And everyone is like, "Woo!" you know, big Jerry Springer vibes. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, like, this does not go down well. Uh, <laughs> and like, um, uh, like why? Yeah, why? I, I, I can't. I can't imagine why. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like, it all kicks off, basically. Um, but you know, not without some like light stepmother slagging off, mm-hmm. which is awesome. Um, so basically, like Lothar car- finds his best Lombards, um, and like rides out. And like, it's like basically like the, the the new Pepin, Pepin of Aquitaine, and Louis the German are like, well, I'm gonna side with Dad because Dad because he just gave us more stuff. Yeah, because he's like, quick shit, fuck. Uh, okay, <laughs> so like Lothar's like, look, I'm like gonna call a general council, and we're gonna mm. try to like deal with all of this. Um, and like basically everyone is like, okay, we we need a way of walking this back. Right. Mm. So Lothar gets pardoned for the rebellion, but he is banished to Italy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when, you know, his center of power was like Frankish, that is like something, right? And mm-hmm. like everyone else kind of like fucks off back where they came, right? Yeah. And then like two years later, <laughs> <laughs> like it, it all kicks off once again. So like Pepin, who has been over in Aquitaine or whatever, gets called back to court. Um, and, uh, like, he gets disrespected. He feels like he's getting bad hospitality. So he, like, mm-hmm. storms off. Right? Mm-hmm. And he's like, that, like, that is it. Like, where is my, you know, mint on my pillow, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Mm-hmm. And so everyone is like, oh, fuck, does this mean he's about to revolt? Um, and basically, like, it's Louis the Pious assumes that, like, Pepin is going to revolt. So he's like, quick, just send out an army? To Aquitaine, like, just in case, like, that's what is happening, which Mm -hmm. is like, dude, like, no one, we do not know if a revolt was going to happen, but you've just made one happen, right? So, like, and, like, in order to do this, they, like, hire some Slavs in, Mm -hmm. which is quite funny, uh, because, you know, we're awesome. I can understand why you would want us there. (laughs) And, like, so as a result of all of this, like, Louis like, okay, well, we're doing a new division. Like we're doing like there's a new div- everyone's like bang new division right so now uh, Charles is the king of Aquitaine and yeah. Pepin doesn't get to be anymore so Charles the bald right mm-hmm. um, and then like Lothar gets the empire again <laughs> because Lothar was just like down in Italy being like do 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 but like Lothar is still kind of like actually I would really love to like fuck with my dad I'm so bad all the time mm-hmm. right um, and so like. The other person who agrees with this is Gregory the Fourth, the Pope, uh, who had like crowned him emperor. <laughs> See, they're they're already fighting with the Pope, like the Holy Roman Empire. Oh, they they walk, they uh, they crawled so uh, yeah, so the, the Habsburgs was, could run. Yeah. Like so good, right? So basically, they're like, oh yeah, well, okay, cool. Here's a great time to like rebel against Louis. I've been declared fucking emperor anyway, so like, let's fucking go. Uh, and then, like, uh, basically, when the Pope is involved, like, like he's like, everybody's talking shit about you. Everyone, like, says you suck. And Louis' army is like, dude, I'm not, like, getting into it with the Pope here. Uh, I don't think that this is, like, particularly cool. Uh, and they just kind of, like, 
do the kind of like Homer Simpson back into the bush thing. Like, mm-hmm. uh, so like uh, this now we uh, refer to as the field of lies. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, which is quite funny. Uh, so, so that's like cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's good. What is this field of lies? The field uh, of lies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You, you, you were just too, too mean to dad. Exactly. And so basically he's like, you know what? I'm going to resign. Uh, like, fine. I see which way the wind is blowing. And he gets, like, taken off to, like, uh, Seminar de Soissons. Uh, Charles the Bald goes back to Prum. The queen mm-hmm. gets sent down to Tortona. And they're like, look, well, you you homies need to, like, we're, we're separating you because you can't be trusted. And, like, Lothar mm-hmm. is just taking over now, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, basically as a part of this... Um, there needs to be kind of like a new order established, right? And there's like, uh, this does not happen, right? Mm -hmm. Like eventually, like, um, you know, like everyone is conspiring. It's it's kind of understood that this is a temporary thing. And everyone is still kind of like, it's it's very Game of Thronesy. It's like everyone's Mm -hmm. got an angle to play, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, suddenly all, like, the half-brothers start coming out of the woodwork, mm-hmm. like, Drogo, you know, people like this. Some of the sisters start coming back. Um, like, you know, people, but then, like, people are like, oh, I don't know. Like, you shouldn't be able to just depose the emperor just like that. And, like, mm-hmm. the whole field of lies thing is playing. Right. And so some people are like, okay, well, actually, maybe I do like Louis, but maybe they're just kind of like playing. They're seeing what they can do. Right. Mm -hmm. So Louis gets restored basically the next year (laughs) in 834. They have a synod. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it's just like it is now time for the synod of Thionville. Uh, And so he gets reinvested. Everyone like puts the crown back on him. Everyone is like, okay, well, this is what's going to go. Um, he gets the penance reversed where, you know, he got in trouble. They're like, you can't do penance anymore. They're like, okay, cool. <laughs> cool. So, um, because, and then everyone agrees that like, we're going to fucking knock this shit off. Right. So Pepin gets restored. Louis, like, you know, like everybody is kind of like, okay, Louis restored. Lothar gets like deprived of a bunch of land again, mm. but he gets Italy back. <laughs> Like, it's just ridiculous. Like, I had to make a chart for myself. Yeah. Uh, because it's just, like, I, it's it's so fucking difficult, right? And and then yeah. there's, like, but don't don't worry. Like, there's time for one more civil war. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, <laughs> yes. finally in 837, Louis says Charles the, Bar, the Bald is going to be the king of all Alamandia and Burgundy. Uh, some of this is Louis' land. Okay. Mm-hmm. So Louis is like, what the fuck? And immediately revolts. Uh, and like Louis the pious is like, mm-hmm. okay, well, guess what? <laughs> We're redividing the realm. <laughs> like Again. Again. I like he gives basically Charles the Bald almost all of like Bavaria. Like you know, like the Bavarian lands, except Bavaria itself. Bavaria mm-hmm. itself, right? Um And then, like, so Pepin dies suddenly, and he goes, guess what? Charles is the new king of Aquatine, (laughs) right? But but that wasn't what, like, the original terms were supposed to be that, like, his sons would get it, right? Mm -hmm. They were like, that's how things are going to get passed down. And, like, the nobles are like, absolutely fucking not. Pepin II is going to be the king. Like, we are not happy with this at all. And then Louis is like, I'm going to invade you. Guess what? That's what's happening now. Like, we're invading Aquitaine. <laughs> and, like, everyone is like, what the fuck, dude? Like, you can't keep doing this. Like, this is this is just, like, so insane. And, like, Louis the German invades Swabia. Pepin II is, like, uh, fighting all the way up to the war. The Danes are like, it's this seems like we can get in here and just, like, absolutely fuck the Frisian coast up. Because <laughs> they're just Viking. Mm-hmm. Right. So they're like, they're just sacking shit where they're like, hey, quick, like, while well, the Carolingians aren't looking, let's fucking go. And Lothar is like, I'm gonna go with uh, dad <laughs> this time. <laughs> and he's like, I will support you if you redo the inheritance again. One more time. Let's so we, go. So we have one more meeting at Verms. 
Uh, and uh, Louis says, okay, like, Louis the German gets Bavaria. Pepin the Second is disinherited for sure, which means that, like, like this kind of, like, leaves, uh, you know, most of the empire mm. and, like, a little bit of the Western, like, up for grabs. Lothar is told, like, you can have which you want. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I want the Eastern one uh, and Italy. And so that, like, leaves the Western stuff for Charles the Bald, right? Mm-hmm. And so basically, uh, like, you know, Aquitaine gets subjugated very, very quickly as a result of all this because Charles the Bald is like, yeah, okay, let's fucking go. Lothar's on side. So, like, this all, it's, it's kicked off, but, like, it's calmed down again. Mm-hmm. And suddenly, like, Louis goes back to Bavaria and he, like, makes the younger Louis, like, fuck off to the Ostmark. Like, it's, it's like, okay, cool. This is going to yeah. be what things are, right? Um, and then Louis, like, basically immediately dies. <laughs> yep. He, yep, just kicks it, dies, and uh, they kind of once again uh, descend into uh, infighting um, between the three sections that have been have been shuffled off. And they kept fighting until the Treaty of Redun kind of made it uh, stick and mm-hmm. divided them up into East, Central, and West. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, after that... It's just an increasing series of like uh, people dying too early, ridiculous mm-hmm. stuff. Um, uh, it, from the grand, mostly the grandsons and great grandson of Char- of Charlemagne, mm-hmm. and yeah, it's just it's a mess. Sho- <laughs> yeah, they they just keep sh- stuff just keeps getting shuffled around and shuffled around and shuffled around, and they keep like fighting with each other and then reconciling and. There's Charles the Bold and I'm mm. char- sorry, Charles the Bald and his son, Charles the Fat, and there's Louis the Stammerer. Stammerer. There's Lothar II, you the know. Revenge, you know, yeah, yeah. Who kept who kept the name Lotharingia alive? You know, it's just like fuck yeah, it's fuck a yeah. fucking mess. But uh, yeah, yeah, they, and it's like basically what this establishes because of Louis the Pious and all this moving around is that nothing is set in stone. Yeah. Right, like basically, Louis is the biggest fail son because his whole deal is that like we can fucking redo this shit at any time. All of this is like dependent on my whims. Like nothing that I decree is ever like forever, right? Yeah. And this will become a real problem when you begin to have more and more Danish slash Viking incursions. You have more and more people attacking, mm. and when the whole idea of like why you're being ruled by a king slash emperor is that you're the defender of like a Christendom on earth and you're getting absolutely fucked by pagans because like Mm -hmm. all of the kings are in a slap fight in Aachen Mm -hmm. right now. Like everyone is just like, fuck this. Like I have no reason to care about this dynasty because they are not seeing to my needs, Mm -hmm. you know, like while I'm getting like absolutely worked by Vikings. Right. Yeah. You've lost the mandate of heaven. <laughs> so, yeah, you have yeah, you've you've lost the mandate of uh of Chuck or mm-hmm. of, of Carl. Um yeah, and they go round and round and like there are different like partitions of the Carolingian Empire. Mm-hmm. There are at least mm-hmm. four of them mm-hmm. from uh 843 with uh Verdun to uh all the way up to 870. Uh, but then, um, kind of humorously enough, um, in 881, Charles the Fat was crowned uh, the emperor, um, mm-hmm. and uh, his uh, the people he vibed with for the throne, Louis the Third of Saxony, Louis the Third of Francia, uh, died the next year, and huh. uh, wow. Yeah. And uh, so he took most of those lands, but gave a couple of them to Carlo Carloman of Aquitaine, um, mm-hmm. who then died a year later in a hunting accident. <laughs> um, and uh, when that happened, all of the lands of Charlemagne, all of the Car- lands of the Carolingian Empire, except the stuff on the edges that had been taken back, uh, finally comes back to Charles the Fat mm-hmm. in... Um, uh, I believe is in about eight eighty four, and 
Yeah. It lasts for four years of shit until Charles the Fat dies, and he's the last one. Uh huh. The last of the Carolyn Jr. Empire- emperors. Yeah. Yeah. He did, he never managed to uh, knock up Richard. Uh, no. you know, so like, um, they, they try to get like one of his bastards yeah. elevated, but it just doesn't go well because like, basically nobody, the pu- likes, the yeah, nobody likes it. Yeah. Nobody likes it. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of like, ba- and basically everyone is like, yo, yeah. you are also having sort of like sort of the Viking problem. We're just not like dealing with this. Right. Yeah. yeah. So like, you know, this is one of those where it's like, you know, um, of Charlemagne's sons, like uh, Pepin the Older, he, you know he, you know he's probably a failed son because that uh, coup really, uh, you know, didn't uh, wasn't wasn't much of a coup. You know, he got forced out by circumstances or whatever. Charles and uh, Pepin of Italy, you know, they died uh, before they could take power. But then Louis the Pious just really. Uh, fucks fucked all of this up because i mean like what like h- how are like his kids even after you know lothar and and louis the pious and all of them are dead like how are their kids supposed to like deal with like all of this shit that's mm-hmm. changed i mean like changed hands five six times in the past like 60 years like, i mean like you know, what is it like, like what does the empire mean it calls into question like yeah. the the entire institution as a whole so if you're gonna switch it up this much, then it has no meaning, basically. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah it's it's not. I mean, it stops being an empire because, like, you know, Louis wanted to rule a bit differently than his dad did, and so these guys are ruling, and now it's just like you've got you've got the western part where like most of France is nowadays, and you know, and then you get this other part, and you start to see that like the central and eastern part is is a lot of that's going to end up becoming part of the Holy Roman Empire in about 30, 40 years after after yeah. eight eighty eight. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so you can just see how it leads it leads seamlessly into that. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it, you know. It it is kind of funny that it comes back together under Charles the Fat one last time, and they're like, yep, get get the get the empire back together mm-hmm. uh, for a couple of years. Oh, we still suck at it. Like, bum My lord. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So that's the fail sons of Charlemagne and how his empire was turned into dust by mm-hmm. both uh, untimely deaths and. Um, uh, having a son who just fucking loved to redo his will, you know, the uh, an, an estate and trust attorney would love this guy. Like, yeah, sure, Louis, we can redo the will again. You know, standard fee. You got to look through all this stuff. You know, hourly stuff. You know how we have to do. And mm. Louis's like, oh yeah, and like this, you know, <laughs> the, the law partners are just you know buying new houses off of this guy redoing his fucking will. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so yeah, that's about going to do it for uh, this episode of uh, Fail Sons. Uh, mm-hmm. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't know what we'll be back with uh, next time, but it will certainly be something that uh, we can most uh, assuredly um, say. Yeah, so yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, Eleanor, What uh, what's going on with you? Um, So ugh, I've been filming a bunch of stuff, but it's like not going to be out like for a couple more months. So I'll keep everybody posted on that. Um, but I, I'm trying to get another blog post up this week. So do check out going hyphen medieval.com for all of your blog posting needs. You know, I'd be on the socials at going medieval. You know, you can get the book, the once in future sex. Uh, yeah, that's, you know, my normal shit. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, you can find me, uh, on the socials at Luke is amazing. You can find my old show, People's History of the Old Republic, uh, wherever you're listening to uh, this show right now. But yeah, uh, thank you all very much for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye.